Thought Vibration, or The Law of Attraction in the Thought World. Book by William Walker Atkinson. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1906. This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 10. Training the Habit Mind. The Subconscious Mind, Importance of Transmitting Proper Impulses, Automatic Habits, Which of These Two Things Shall I Do? Forming a New Habit, Breaking an Old One, That Just Once. Idea, The Mind a Piece of Paper, Mental Creases. Professor William James, the well-known teacher of, and writer upon psychology, very truly says. The great thing in all education is to make our nervous system our ally instead of our enemy. For this we must make automatic and habitual as early as possible, as many useful actions as we can, and as carefully guard against growing into ways that are likely to be disadvantageous. In the acquisition of a new habit, or the leaving off of an old one, we must take care to launch ourselves with as strong and decided initiative as possible. Never suffer an exception to occur until the new habit is securely rooted in your life. Seize the very first possible opportunity to act on every resolution you make and on every emotional prompting you may experience in the direction of the habits you aspire to gain. This advice is along the lines familiar to all students of mental science, but it states the matter more plainly than the majority of us have done. It impresses upon us the importance of passing on to the subconscious mind the proper impulses so that they will become automatic and second nature. Our subconscious mentality is a great storehouse for all sorts of suggestions from ourselves and others, and, as it is the habit mind, we must be careful to send it the proper material from which it may make habits. If we get into the habit of doing certain things, we may be sure that the subconscious mentality will make it easier for us to do just the same thing over and over again, easier each time. Until finally we are firmly bound with the ropes and chains of the habit and find it more or less difficult, sometimes almost impossible, to free ourselves from the hateful thing. We should cultivate good habits against the hour of need. The time will come when we will be required to put forth our best efforts. And it rests with us today whether that hour of need shall find us doing the proper thing automatically and almost without thought or struggling to do it bound down and hindered with the chains of things opposed to that which we desire at that moment. We must be on guard at all times to prevent the forming of undesirable habits. There may be no special harm in doing a certain thing today, or perhaps again tomorrow, but there may be much harm in setting up the habit of doing that particular thing. If you are confronted with the question, which of these two things should I do? The best answer is, I will do that which I would like to become a habit with me. In forming a new habit, or in breaking an old one, we should throw ourselves into the task with as much enthusiasm as possible. In order to gain the most ground before the energy expends itself when it meets with friction from the opposing habits already formed, we should start in by making as strong an impression as possible upon the subconscious mentality. Then we should be constantly on guard against temptations to break the new resolution, just this once. This, just once, idea kills off more good resolutions than any other one costs. The moment you yield, just this once, you introduce the thin edge of the wedge that will, in the end, split your resolution into pieces. Equally important is the fact that each time you resist temptation the stronger does your resolution become. Act upon your resolution as early and as often as possible, as with every manifestation of thought and action, the stronger does it become. You are adding to the strength of your original resolution every time you back it up with action. The mind has been likened to a piece of paper that has been folded. Ever afterwards it has a tendency to fold in the same crease, unless we make a new crease or fold, when it will follow the last lines. And the creases are habits, every time we make one it is so much easier for the mind to fold along the same crease afterward. Let us make our mental creases in the right direction. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.